Welcome to Startup to Storefront, presented by Aura Bora. All right, welcome to the podcast on today's show with the founders of Funk Off. Thanks for joining. For people who don't know, what does your company do? We are the only all-in-one toothbrush and toothpaste that's reusable 30 times for on-the-go, getting the funk off of your teeth. And we have the two co-founders here with us. You guys have an incredible story, obviously a Shark Tank story too, and so we'll delve into all of it. But what brought you to this idea? What was the problem you guys were having, either as individuals? What was the thing you were like, all right, we got to start a, a company to do this one thing? <sighs> Alcohol, Alcohol, red wine, okay. red wine stains on your teeth. Yeah. Um, I was uh, living up in Northern California and I live in uh, Southern California now. And I was always visiting the wineries on the weekend, carrying around a toothbrush and toothpaste tube with me to get the purple funk off of my teeth. And then I'd put my little lipstick on and go. And I just had that idea in the bathroom once of why isn't there something that's all in one re reusable and compact like my lipstick, but for my teeth. Yeah. So that's where the aha moment came from. And then what was your first step in trying to take that aha moment? Did you make like a prototype for yourself where you would yourself use it? I did. I went home and definitely slept off um, that the wine tasting tour that was on, <laughs> okay. on fire. Yeah. Um, but this is actually the original prototype. That is my round spinning toothbrush head off of my electric Oral-B toothbrush. Yeah. I yeah. stuck it on a chapstick container uh, and started working with designers in San Francisco through the years, filing the first of eight of now 12 patents that we have on okay. our little funk off teeth refreshers. And then how did you first get started? Was it a website? Was it e-com? How did you go about trying to launch this thing? And what, what year was this to give people context? What year did you have the first working version? The idea came in 2010. 2010. Um, okay, a lot so of designing went into the prototyping and the, the patent filing. We wanted to make sure that we had a huge, strong IP portfolio um, before getting the product to market. Um, and Sonia and I joined okay. forces in 2019 to refine the designs, getting the prototype into a working prototype, into a working model, finished up the designs with the designers, and then we launched, um, we were supposed to, we had a Kickstarter, and it was uh, supposed to deliver product May of 2020, when everybody was covering up their mouths and not going out anywhere, which, so that made it no fun. Yeah. Uh, so we yeah. had a little bit long of a delay, but we came into market July of 2021 on our website. How did you know about the patent thing? What was the idea? Like, because most entrepreneurs skip that. They think about that m much later. But how did you tune into, we have to get this thing patented? For me, it was a fellow entrepreneur from Maryland okay. that had recommended to patent and over patent your, your idea. Okay. And so 2010, your early stages, social media isn't even a thing yet. And then 2019, it's all the rage. So it's quite a different business landscape. And so then when you launch, how'd you guys do it? What was your first step in the launch? And, and Sonia, maybe this is for you. Yeah, because when we got together in 2019, we needed to commercialize the product. And so that's what we worked on um, until basically early 2020 and then didn't have product to launch until July of 2021. And COVID kind of created some, some challenges there, but also, you know, there were manufacturing challenges along the way. I know Joelle showed you the, the very first um, model that she created. This is actually the first tooled prototype that we had. And, and it took a long time to get this and then to get to what ended up being the final version. This is a white version. And when we launched in 2021, yes, by that time, e-commerce was well underway, especially because of COVID, uh, but so was social media. So we launched first direct to consumer and we are still mostly a direct-to-consumer business. Um, we launched on Instagram and then Amazon very quickly. Okay. And then at some point, does Shark Tank reach out to you guys or do you guys reach out to Shark Tank? How does that happen? It's What's a fun story. Well, they're on, I think they're... 16th season now. Yeah, 16th, um, exactly. And I applied on the fourth season, actually sent a bottle of wine to LA with no prototype, <laughs> tried to persuade that. And then I did an open casting call 2010 in San Diego with my daughters. Um, they were nice. <laughs> sick from school that day. And then they actually found us and asked us to apply once they saw the social media buzz of what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're certified women owned. We yeah. have 12 patents, 11 year US, one's China. Uh, we always say it's not rocket science, but you know, Colgate and Crest and the big guys didn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's a great story and a great partnership. Sonny and I have known each other since seventh grade. That's so. awesome. Okay. So then you guys apply and then at some point you get the email saying you're going to come on at this time, be ready. Well, it was a little different because they invited us to apply. Mm -hmm. So we basically were sort of in the process. We definitely had to apply and go through all of the, you know, the stages. And at every stage they kept saying, okay, you've made it, but this doesn't mean anything. You know, we're, we may not call you back. 
and I know you've had people from Shark Tank on, it's fascinating, even once you film, which we filmed in July of 22, they said you may not air. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we had to wait from July of 22 to get that email about being able to air, which we got three weeks before we aired. And then before you guys go on, what shark are you guys like really trying to get or what for what two are you guys like, okay, we want deals with these individuals. We like them. How does that go? We had different sharks. Um, okay. So we had a little, a couple of exceptions go on with Funk Off, which I, I think we're very proud of. And we, we actually walked in with two glasses of true red wine. And so we served okay. up red wine to all five sharks, hoping that would help. And they all five love the product you'll see on the episode. That's fun. But we had different sharks that we were looking after. Happy to have any deal because they're all so yeah. incredible themselves and their network and their entrepreneurship. But Mark Cuban was one of mine. And Kevin O'Leary, because he had a wine business as, as well going oh, on but then emma greed was our guest shark yes and she's a huge a proponent legend. of uh, yes yeah. uh, female entrepreneurship but really we were so happy with robert he came through and yeah. it's, it's, it's a great riveting episode quite honestly yeah um, it is we'll have a bunch of b-roll in this episode so people can see it but okay so when you guys get on there you, you go for i think you're asking for two hundred fifty thousand, and then you tell that there's this like daunting moment where they're loving you guys you guys are having like this incredible conversation they like you they like the product they're like this makes so much sense and then they ask you your sales you guys say something like eighty two thousand dollars i think is the number and then all of a sudden the conversation changes what was that like what was the, what was it being in the room at that time like because you had raised six hundred and something thousand and they're kind of just doing the quick math we knew we were going to get that question And it was actually one of the things that we talked about a lot before we went on because we, it was so early. Mm -hmm. We had, we had been in market eight months and we had limited inventory. And so it was a a difficult conversation, but it definitely did kind of put the brakes on the conversation at the time. However, Robert saw the momentum that we had and I love what he said at the end, even after we left the stage, I didn't know he said this until it aired. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what he said and the reason why he bit was because he believed in the product and in us, which was such a huge compliment. Yeah. And to this day, it's, you know, one of the things that keeps me going. Did anybody not love the product? I love the product. product. No, I'll be honest. honest. It's a great product. I love the product. What do we always say when people interview us? Do you invest in the entrepreneur or the product? Great entrepreneur, great product. Also, there's a lot of drama in the episode. Like all the sharks are out. You guys turn around and start walking out of the room. And then Robert is goes like, wait, wait, wait. We were almost through that first door. It was wild. It was wild. And yeah. I had not seen an episode like that. I've, I mean, I've never it, seen that, I think, crazy. to date still. And so and what we don't know is Sonia and I are standing there. We kind of, you know, you go in. We were so prepared. We were, I think, over prepared. We really worked very hard mm-hmm. to make sure we had all questions answered in 10 different ways and know our numbers very well. But we didn't have that. Uh, that was not part of the pr- preparing of walking back into the tank. So we both were kind of taken off guard. And I was, you know, we were standing, the positioning of us, she's physically behind me, and, you know, Robert's over here. So you'll right. see the reaction of, I she can't see me, I can't see her. And now we're trying to crunch numbers of a counter or not counter. And it was, it was like something teleported us somewhere else. I'm not really <laughs> sure what happened. But, but And you so land the deal. We and then the deal. obviously there's always due diligence afterwards. Uh, how did it end up going? That's one of the fun things we like to talk about is what happened after the show. We did a lot of due diligence through many, many months. Um, mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, our valuation was cut in half. And so we did not go through with the deal. Okay. And then what happened to the business though? Because airing it, so then you guys air in February, you mentioned, right? And so then... All of a sudden, what, what was the bump like? What was the television presence? What did that lead to your, how did it change your company? It was a huge game changer for our company. Totally. Uh, we, we sold out that night. Okay. Um, we sold out uh, during the East Coast airing when I was watching it. Joelle didn't even get to watch it. Oh, that's funny. You know, until three hours later. Yeah. And by that point, we were well out of inventory. Okay. Um, so we took pre-orders, which we were at least ready to do that took pre-orders and it's just, you know, it just changed the trajectory of our business ever since then. Mm -hmm. It puts you on the map for hundreds of millions of people around the world, but it also puts you on the map for potential uh, partners, people who want to list your product. It just changed the whole dynamic. And so what happened? So what, what were some of the exciting things that came from that that you can tell us, whether it's partnerships or different investors, where is the business today? Give us a window. Absolutely. We know internationally, that's that's what oh, shocked wow. us the most is the international need and desire for this product and shipping overseas to places like Saudi Arabia and places we just 
had no idea this for. Is, so I was at a trivia the other day, like last Tuesday, and one of the questions was like, name the top 10 wine consuming countries. America's like number 10 on that list. Oh. Like it's like wild that there's your point of international. Mm -hmm. Most of these countries are in Europe, which I had no idea. I thought I would be like, yeah, USA for sure. But that's interesting. Okay, so it opens up to a whole new market, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia. Okay. And our wholesale division really has skyrocketed as well. So we're in about 180 locations in 48 states in the Cayman Islands. And we have a great counter unit because everybody, it's not just for wine. It's really mm -hmm. for anybody with teeth. And mm -hmm. we always say, you know, everybody has teeth. And then we got corrected at a trade show. And they said, no, not everybody has teeth. 99%. So I said, fine, 99% of the people have teeth. <laughs> okay. And then I won't say where the trade show was. Teeth. But this other state comes in. She goes, not in our state, honey. We've got 83%. I'm like, and we're lucky if they wear shoes. I said, okay. But it's really, it's for it's your so on the go. Funny. So it's, we say it's from your morning coffee to your red wine at night, right? Yeah. So, and, and people eat and get food in their teeth. I had actually almonds on the way up here. So I used it. Yeah. The wine shops embrace it. Dental offices, anywhere there's a counter, we're there. Pharmacies, grocery stores. I mean, you name it. It's a great giftable item as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of boutiques carry it. My dad was one of these people that would brush their teeth after every, after every like drink or meal. And I realized there's a lot of people like that. And so when I first saw this on Shark Tank, that's what I thought of was like, oh, this is just something that you can brush whenever. It doesn't have to be red wine. It could be after lunch or to your point, almonds, whatever it might be. And everybody's, the, and everybody's the whitening their teeth and everybody's right. straightening their teeth. And it's really right. the thing that you notice the most on, on everybody. It um, is, yeah. And we're also socially conscious taking pictures. So it's okay. a great thing to carry on. And we made sure the length of it as well fits in the average man's 36 jean pocket. So, we, you know, it's oh, not just for ladies. Wow. Smart. And I would just add too, like we had, it's been interesting. And I think this would have happened, but I think Shark Tank made it happen faster. Mm -hmm. There were two things that happened around the time that we were launching and airing on Shark Tank, which was Invisalign went off patent and Invisalign just skyrocketed from there. Mm -hmm. And Invisalign users love our product because of what you just said, mm -hmm. Diego, mm -hmm. that, you know, you can use it to clean your teeth with anything. It's not just about red wine. And when you use Invisalign, you have to eat and drink throughout the day and you need to put that back in. Yeah. So I think that was really powerful. And then also the whitening segment also took off. Um, there were Zoom patents also went away. And so there was a lot more competition and a lot more whitening. And this is a great product to keep your teeth white in between whitening treatments. And so I think between that and Shark Tank, it's just been a great confluence of, of opportunities. So a lot more use cases, yeah. so not so much red wine, but could be literally anything. Uh, are you guys mostly in dental office, or what's the strategy in terms of where you where people find you? Anywhere there's a counter. Okay. At coffee shops, dental offices, pharmacies, That's wine fun. stores, gift stores, boutiques, yeah. you name it, hotel gift shops. And have you guys raised more capital since the airing, or is it? Or are you maybe, I guess it's been a year-ish, and so... Maybe you're trying to do that now. Where's the company today in terms of sales? And Everybody's always trying to raise money, no matter true. who you are, what, what stage you're in. So we're constantly always looking to expand. I mean, these are just the first three colors that have come out. This is our signature blue, of course, the white and the black. Yep. We have other colors and other flavors. We, we formulated the gel inside as well. And it's very important because it's not, there's no fluoride in there. So you can actually okay. swallow it and it's 100% natural and vegan. So you don't need water. And a light a light peppermint. Okay. Now you just take the top off, you twist it, and then our, our natural gel comes up through the bristles, yeah. and then you get the funk off your teeth, and you rinse it normally like you would a, a toothbrush bristles. They're the exact same bristles. Okay. Um, and the cap is aerated so that the bristles don't get funky, and then there's a mirror on the bottom. That's so, so smart. So we're kind of like an all-in-one, but they, we've had a lot of people ask for different colors, like, you know, pink and yeah. camouflage was the strangest one, I have to say. Yeah. I think it's great for <laughs> camping, so I mean, it kind of makes sense. How much are they, are you guys selling the same price, 22-ish? 22. Okay, 22 is the same price. I can't wait to share this with all my friends. That's pretty exciting. Where do you guys want to take this? Like, what, what's on the roadmap for 2025? Um, obviously, you got to, you're a company, you're up and running, you got to focus on certain things. What are the main objectives for, call it Q1, Q2 next year? Yeah, so we are fundraising okay. and we'll continue to do that. But one of the great things that's also happened is we have interest from sort of larger oral care companies that we may potentially work Sounds with. Sounds like there's a deal so. on the table. <laughs> very nice. Congrats. Yeah, and, and I think it's I think it's 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 you know it's very challenging to um, to be in you know in entrepreneurship now. Mm. E-commerce is fantastic, but it's also very cluttered. And what we found mm -hmm. was, you know, we did need to raise capital, but it's also really powerful to have synergies from a resource standpoint. And so, working with another oral care company will help us create those synergies. 
from a manufacturing standpoint and as well as from a marketing standpoint. But there's a lot of versions of Funk Off that we were already thinking about way back when. Mm -hmm. Different colors, different ingredients that you can put in it, different features. Um, we'd love to have a refillable one. Mm -hmm. Right now mm -hmm. it's reusable 30 times, which is great. There's okay. nothing on the market like that. And so it is better for the environment than something like a one-time use. Yeah. But it would be really great to have a refillable one. So that's that's one of our priorities. So that's my next question. So it's like a monthly thing for people listening. If they're like, okay, how do, so it's a monthly thing per se. Maybe you guys have a subscription. People can get one delivered every month. You yeah. can, you okay. can. There's 30 uses uh, okay. for for that reason. Um, and there's really there's really more, but on it depends on the amount of gel that you use. And sure. so it's really great just for on the go. We, we had one of our marketing colleagues that had come up with a good slogan of like just on the like when you have that one time when you're out and you don't think that you're not, going to be out and you're going to come home, mm. but you don't come home. Yeah. It's nice to have this with you. And it's the holiday season. So it's like the best stocking stuffer around. It's the best stocking stuffer. We come in bundles as well. So you can okay. pop them right in. Yeah. What colors are you guys working on? What What will you expand into? What colors, Diego, what should we work on? I just think about so many two. things. Like I play a lot of tennis. And so then there's going to be like, I can imagine the people at the tennis club being like, oh, this should match like my tennis bag, whether it's green or purple or their tennis teams. There's all these teams and all teams have colors. And so then it's like the team becomes like an easy one, I think, right? So I don't know. That's just what comes to mind. When you asked about business, one of the avenues, which is so profitable, which we've gone a lot lot, lot down the road for, but haven't produced yet, is to co-brand. Yeah, exactly. So tailgating for colleges totally. or like, you know, pickleball is all crazy, right? Is totally. it pickleball or tennis that you play? Tennis, okay. but okay. either one, yeah. And colors and, and monograms, like the top has our, our trademarked logo smile, but it could be, you know, the Clemson Tiger totally. or, I mean, there's it's endless for making it personal. So you, you hit it right on the head. On, that's that's so a fun. great expansion tool. Will yeah. you guys go back to any of the sharks? Will you email Robert and say, hey, look, we're in a different place now. Let's uh, reconvene. Let's do something. Well, we heard Mark Cuban lives in Laguna Beach. He has a place there, right? So you never know. I could just <laughs> knock on his door. You should. What else can you tell us? Where should people find you? Where can they buy the product? Where can they support Instagram, all the stuff? Yeah, our website. There's two Ks and two Fs because there's two two of us. So it's F-U-N-K-K-O-F-F. -F, and that's all the handles, the website and everything. But just the two Ks, the two Fs. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast and sharing your story. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us, Diego. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.